Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. It's uh, Wednesday here, a little bit gray, a little bit rainy, but it's gonna be okay. So today I thought I would tell you a little bit about some performance work I was doing recently um, that I haven't been mentioning in videos. So um, I was trying to improve the compile time of Serenity when building inside Serenity. And I like to use the, um, the process class from the kernel as my benchmark because this is a huge class and <laughs> takes time to compile. So I just compile it and see how long it takes and that's my benchmark. So I recently got a 15% speed improvement uh, with a single change and I thought I would tell you what that was. But first I have to back up a bit. So something that's really expensive in Serenity right now is making syscalls. And um, a lot of that is because we do quite aggressive validation. So when we enter the kernel from user space, we look at everything that you're passing to the kernel, and make sure that, hey, this is, this is valid stuff, like this pointer that you're giving the kernel. Uh, yeah, it's a pointer in your address space, things like that. And also, we check that your stack is valid and it, um, it's in a valid stack region and, and you know, validate stuff, right? And that takes a lot of time. And um, GCC, when compiling the process class, is doing a lot of syscalls, like a lot. And um, my initial instinct, which uh, I shouldn't just have listened to, but I did anyway, because, um, because sometimes we just listen to our instinct instead of do the smart thing and measure. <laughs> and so my initial instinct was that oh, well, it's probably all that validation that has to do all these address space lookups, and the address space lookups are uh, linear time because they are we store the address space in uh, vectors of regions in the processes. Um, so I tried to come up with some different data structure that would uh, have a better lookup time complexity. So like um, I was using an AVL tree to do that, and... Um, it did indeed improve the lookup time, but it made insertion slower, so it was like it didn't actually come out any better. Um, and I was a bit frustrated with that, but we'll probably come back to that later. I'm sure I, I did it stupidly somehow. But uh, it felt like a bit of a dead end, and I got frustrated, and I, I figured, okay, fine, let me look a bit closer to what's actually going on here, which I should have done at first. And then that's when I realized that all of this syscall traffic is because of malloc. And uh, it's my malloc. <laughs> I wrote malloc and it's doing all these syscalls. And that was much, much better information than my stupid instinct. So um, the way that malloc worked back then was that um, for allocations smaller than a page, we would allocate a page and then chop the page up into little chunks and then give you a chunk that fit your allocation and then keep the rest of the chunks um, for subsequent calls to malloc. And uh, one, one page is four kilobytes, by the way. And so uh, for allocations, for malloc allocations larger than a page, we would just call mmap directly. And then when you freed a uh, large allocation, we would call map on it. Um, whereas when you freed a smaller allocation, we would just put that back into the uh, block where it came from. And then once everything had been put back into that block, then we would free the block. And uh, yeah, I mean, roughly speaking, um, there were some optimizations and, and other mechanisms here to, to avoid some stuff, but that's the general idea. Now, it turns out that GCC allocates a lot of stuff and um, a lot of stuff larger than a page also. So um, we ended up just calling mmap and mmonmap all the frickin' time because um, GCC would allocate, say, eight kilobytes, and then we would free eight kilobytes, and for us, that was all of the mmap and all of the mmonmap. And this, this was just very expensive, and that's where we were spending so much of the time when compiling. Um, and I noticed this because I profiled it, right? Um, and once you profile something, you can't, you can't really lie to yourself as much anymore and you, you can't, your instinct is just gonna have to shut up uh, because you got the real world evidence staring you in the face like, okay, this is what the program is actually doing. Uh, I know you wanted to, to work on optimizing this other thing, but really doesn't matter. 
here's the real problem, deal with it. And that was really good. So what I ended up doing for that was uh, now I've made so that malloc allocates 64 kilobyte uh, blocks and, and chops them into chunks instead of uh, four kilobyte pages, right? So what this means is that um, that's eight times larger than the previous chunked uh, block size, basically. Uh, so we, um, we can do eight times less um, mmap and mmonmap, um, <laughs> ideally. But uh, obviously it doesn't always work out that way. But, but it, there's significantly less uh, traffic from doing that. Um, so, but what, one of the issues that I had with that was that uh, in order to, uh, with, with the way that the chunk, chunked blocks are laid out in memory, um, whenever you free from a chunk block, we need to find the base of that chunk block in order to be able to find the metadata. And this scheme is not perfect, and, and I would like to do it differently eventually, but right now that's how it works. So you allocate like a 64 kilobyte chunk block, and then at the start of that block is a little bit of metadata about the block, and then come all the chunks. And so um, when you call free on a pointer, then we, wanna, we can quickly find the base of that block so that we can find where the metadata is. And then we can add the freed pointer to uh, the free list and so on. And uh, it's, it's all just pretty neat. Uh, but in order to, when, when the chunk blocks were all four kilobytes, then um, everything that you needed was already there. You could just mmap, and mmap would guarantee that the pointer you get is uh, page size aligned. So you could just mask off the bottom bits, and then you would have a, um, the address of the chunk block metadata. But in order to increase the chunk block size to 64 kilobytes, I needed um, I needed mmap to give me 64 kilobyte aligned pointers, and it, mmap can't do that. So I had to extend the mmap interface a little bit. So now there is um, a special version of mmap called Serenity mmap, and then the normal mmap is just a wrapper around Serenity mmap, and Serenity mmap takes an additional alignment argument. So you can say, um, the address that you give me, I want that to be aligned to a certain size. So now malloc will say, um, hey, Serenity mmap, give me a pointer that's 64 kilobyte aligned. And then in the kernel, uh, we make sure that we allocate a chunk out of the address space that sits on a 64 kilobyte address boundary. And what that allows us to do then is we can mask off the bottom bits from the from any pointer in that chunk block, and it will give us the address of the chunk block metadata header. And that's pretty neat. And so uh, once all of that stuff was in place, I could change the, uh, the malloc implementation to use 64 kilobyte blocks. And now we do much less malloc and free traffic. And GCC is really happy and compiles the process class in, I think, 20, 21 seconds instead of 24, 25 seconds. Um, and it's really good. So that's uh, where that improvement came from. And now I need to remeasure, reanalyze, and figure out what the next important thing is to work on. Um, but I guess I just want to talk about it because it's, it's fun stuff, but I haven't been showing any of it. So this is kind of thing where you, you just got to make a little progress every now and then. Um, and eventually, eventually we'll get down below the 10 second mark and then I'll be, then I'll be very happy. But it's a long way to go. Anyways, <laughs> that's, that's all I had for today. I'm in the parking lot here at work, so I got to go. But thanks for hanging out with me on the commute. And I will see you next time. Bye.